Brandon Davis, Swan Energy. Excellent, and our mic levels look good, so Provolone is doing a fantastic job. Uh, Brandon Davis joining us here, Swan Energy. We're going to talk about a variety of different things, but we, we have to start the interview off talking about the coronavirus, the COVID-19 we have, and um, I tell you, we've got all kinds of phone calls coming in. We've got public health officials. I, I've got the governor and the lieutenant governor that I've, I'm going to be speaking to later on. And so, uh, uh, Brandon, I appreciate you coming on. I know you're busy as well. Talk to me about, you know, what's going on. Because here at where, where we're at at our Crude Life Studios, we're still business as usual, you know, under watch, if you will. But, you know, we, we people are still showing up and that sort of thing. So how about you guys at your office? Where are you guys at? We're in Greenway and everyone's showing up and working. Uh, we have lots to do. There, really, nothing's changed as far as office functionality and in, in our program and i don't see it changing in the near future but it's definitely a different vibe than it was two weeks ago well and sure. that that doesn't mean other people's environment hasn't changed and that sort of thing and that's kind of one of the things i, I do love about about america where we're at still that uh, we can still allow some of these things you know to happen and you know obviously it, it might change but um Talk to me a little bit about the guys out in the field that you've got. You know, we talked a little bit off the air, and you mentioned, you know, you've got guys that go out in the field a little bit. So, first of all, what's their day like in terms of, you know, who do they interact with? Who are your customers? What types of things are they doing? Because I think everybody kind of understands the office job, you know. every People have an office or a cube and laptop or a desktop and phone calls and all that other stuff. It's the guys out in the field, though, that at the end of the day, their jobs are going to keep going no matter what. Their jobs will probably not change at all. Not at all. <laughs> which, is the, which is the interesting, yeah. I mean, they're they're going out. My, my uh, main field business is a short-haul water, wastewater company. So we pick up water from wells and haul it to disposal wells. And that absolutely, number one, it can't stop. Because if that business stops, oil production stops, and that is a whole different conversation. Um, so those are very much essential things that need to continue happening. And we we work with uh, most of the players in the stack in, in central Oklahoma is, is where we are with water hauling. Um, but nothing's changed there other than, um, of course, the companies that we haul water for want a better deal. Um <laughs> That's sad for them. It's like it's already as good as it's going to get. I don't hey, see how but, anyone could reduce their prices. For by the right way, now. let oh, me oh. jump in here for a second on this one because, <laughs> well, no, in, in all seriousness, you know, this is something the the oil companies put out, and it, it went through the media, so they put it out publicly, and they said we want a twenty five percent reduction across the board. And listen, I, I don't know where you stand on this, but they already did it back in 2014 15 and 16 and um, i know <laughs> and and so there's i i'm speaking up for the industry now saying listen oil and gas companies i get it you guys are the kings of the economy but stop you can't ask these guys to 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 cut anymore they've they've cut everywhere they possibly can and i i, I you know what i mean i mean i like i said i don't know where you stand on this but that's a pretty hot topic in the industry right now I stand where I feel that prices can't go any lower for services. I, I, they're, they're too low right now. I, our margins are in the single percentage point if we're lucky, um, and we're not lucky that often. So for, for any request, I, I'm not going to go work for someone and pay to do it, and that's what they're asking for. Um, I'll park all my trucks before that happens and uh, just wait. And the downside for these guys doing this, this game they're playing, it's a very, very slippery slope because at some point there's going to be one, co there's going to be one company and then they're going to pay 500 times more. That, that's where, that's what they're, if they keep doing this, that's what's going to happen. You know, it's going to eliminate everybody else. It's going to eliminate all the competition that drove the prices down in the first place. But when, when that changes, when that, when that dynamic goes, and it's already been shifting, this is going to push it way further down the road. Um, it's a very da it's dangerous territory for them. Well, we, for sure. we're we're an unknown territory. We're in dangerous territory. We're in unpredictable territory. So right now, a lot of these conversations they very well could happen. Now, a lot of them could mm -hmm. be could be you know fear mongering, pie in the sky, or whatever the case is. But the fact of the matter is, 
when you look at the current environment, anything is possible. Anything is possible. I mean, I talked to a guy earlier today about about the conversations about nationalizing oil, for crying out loud. And that was a politician I talked to about that. And he said, don't you say that. Well, no. I, I mean, I'm not going to continue on and enable that by any means. But if that's the conversations that are happening, well, anything's possible. So what, what I think that is going to happen here is I think the biggest threat that is going on to our economy is small business and 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 mid-level businesses to where they need to be be kind of the focus right now because i don't i mean i i look at it and i feel really bad for them because you know boeing's going to get bailed out and i don't know if some small business guy is going to get bailed out I, I i guess i don't know i just i i'm kind of looking to see what happened in, in the energy industry and what they went through and opec and russia hit and it almost gave you like a preview of what was going to happen to the rest of the economy and yesterday I talked to Joe Dancy about it's almost like the globe is on the bust cycle of a boom bust town, you know, where it just shuts down so fast. And um, I don't know, it just it just made me think a little bit more about what, what's going on and what's happening. And I really started to focus on small business a little bit. You mentioned water hauling, you mentioned hot oil, I think one of those two, but it, that's a big small business and all kinds of different things. Have you thought about the small business angle in this, about, you know, even the servers and the restaurants and the landlords that own the buildings that the servers are supposed to pay the rent on and now they don't, it's just, it's just a ripple and it can, I don't know. It, I, I'll, I'll shut up and, and let you talk now because I, I can go for hours on this. I, I can too. And I, that's the first thing you thought, I thought of whenever it's like when, just when they canceled the NBA season, you know, it's like how many thousands and thousands of people that depend on, checks from those jobs aren't going to get paid now i mean just right then and that has happened here everywhere it's like the life as we know it is going to be different going forward than it has been in the past period it's going to be and it's going to be a very different environment for businesses small businesses are going to struggle and especially businesses that are barely breaking even um on a month-to-month basis, a friend of mine has a restaurant here in town, Cowboys and Indians, and you know they've just got to a point where they were rolling really well, and now they can't have people come to the restaurant. And like I said, think about the server. That's crazy. Think about the server that relies on that daily cash as part of their yes. income. In fact, in North Dakota, where I'm from, they only pay servers four and a quarter an hour of minimum wage because Man, when I was a server, I was $2 and 25 cents. So they're, they're paid well. I'm it, just going to say exactly. I mean, some States re- require you to pay the actual minimum wage, but there's a lot of States that you can pay a couple bucks or more under the minimum wage because the tips offset it. Okay. So, right. you know, I, and I get that. So when you think about the servers that rely on the tips in order to pay the rent, because let's be honest, a lot of servers, they either um, rent or they supplement income for um, for somebody who's more of a breadwinner. And I don't mean to stereotype, but that, that is the truth. That That's just the lifestyle of the cash person that has. And then not only that, but like I said, now you got the landlords, you know. And I was having a conversation with someone the other day about their property in Maui, Airbnb. Farmer family from central North Dakota. $15,000 a month, really, at the end of the day, that they got to come up with for that property in Maui. Well, it worked just fine on Airbnb for the last five years. They had no problem paying any. In fact, they were even go, they were even making a little money on that. But I don't know how many people are going to fork out $15,000 a month out of their 401k, which is not there. $15,000 a month out of their savings. Do you know what I mean? I mean, these are real problems. These are real problems that people are having. And no one's talking about it at all. So, um, I, I, I'm, I'm thinking that people just haven't had time to let it all soak in. I, I think you're right. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to bring you on because, you know, you, you, you're one of the, the companies out there that is really remaining calm through this. And I do think that's, that's somewhat of a positive attribute to have through this. Secondly, at the end of the day, what we just talked about earlier is, is the honest to God truth. The energy industry will continue to move ahead. Now, retail is going to change. Um, you know, the, yep. the, the grocery stores might change. Uh, there might be some insurance agents that'll change. 
you know, that sort of thing. But the energy industry is not going to change. The guys are going to need to go out in the field. Um, now the energy offices could change. I get all that. But um, at the end of the day, what you mentioned earlier about the, the guys driving and trucking and that sort of thing, that that's going to remain the same. You know, we might get some re remote fracking that will increase and everything else. But talk to me about you, the guys that you have, the services that you provide a little bit. And, you know, there's a reason that you're remaining calm. For one, you guys have a plan. And number two, you understand that you've got some some – positions and jobs that just can't change because we need power that that there there really isn't a plan and I, i'm going to say that half-heartedly um you know obviously we're, we're planning to continue things as as normal but you know, the calm about me is is not so much in that i know what's going to happen and i know what to do it's that i know i can't control what's coming at me right now um, and it's coming from many angles, from the oil price continuing to just plunge to, like, just generally people just not being able to go to work because the government's telling them not to. Um, I'm just, I'm sitting back and watching and waiting for an opportunity because at some point there will be something I can control that will make a difference. Um, at, at this point, it's literally just kind of let it all come at you and, and you know, don't, don't react too quickly and and your opportunity will present itself. And that is true for all my businesses. And I have an operating gold mine in um, Oregon. I have the trucking company in Oklahoma. We have non-operated working interest in wells um, in uh, Colorado and in Oklahoma. And uh, we have a little field we operate here in Texas through a company called Oak Energy that I have. But you know, all of it's just kind of hanging out um, and waiting for an opportunity. And when we see it, we're going to pounce. And uh, that's, that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to let it take advantage of me. You, you have a gold mine? I <laughs> do. That's cool. Yes, and it, it's a, <laughs> it costs a fortune to keep. I'm just going to say. <laughs> I mean, that's so cool. I mean, whether it's, it's operating or not. I mean, I've, I've seen these ads about these, like, remote locations in Colorado where you can buy, buy like, an old gold mine or whatever. And I thought, you know, that'd be cool just to own one. <laughs> Anyway. Mine's for sale if you if you have any takers. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, it does it does have has plenty of gold. All right. So if anybody's looking for a gold mine, man, we'll put the links right at the the Crude Life's uh, podcast show page. You can certainly link up there. But uh, talk to me about the world of energy a little bit. Uh, you know, from the five thousand foot view or the five year plan. Where are you guys going, you know? I mean, because, you know, you mentioned that you're kind of laying back a little bit. So that means you guys have, have future plans. You guys are, are looking ahead at the future. You're not, you know what I mean? You're not reacting in a way that a lot of other companies are. You, you guys have future plans, I can certainly tell. But, uh, you know, just talk to me about over the next few years. What, what are your guys, you know, plans as you see it? Yeah, well, the best laid plans change and change often, and that's, what we're in the process of doing right now. Um, you have to be in the market and the market changes constantly in our business. So you constantly have to be, have, you have your head on a swivel and be looking for where to be, um, whether that's in, in more gas or oil or uh, service side of work or, or get back to drilling wells. And, and I, I feel that with where things are right now, most of our focus is going to be on production and, and increasing production, lowering cost, and getting more out of what we've got um, than developing new uh, production. And that's that's where I see us going um, in the next few years, based on what I what's happening today. And it could change tomorrow, um, but that that is th this is when you squeeze all the blood out of the turnip, and and that's what our plan is. You mentioned earlier that you have some activity happening in the stack right now. Are you in any other shale plays? Are you looking to be in any other shale plays? Talk to me about the different uh, shale play USA activity you have. Well, the, the, my, my, my bread and butter, my, my, the love of my life is the DJ Basin and the Wattenberg field proper. Um, it has been very good to me, and we've had a lot of, a lot of, a lot of good things happen up there and, uh, from an economic standpoint until the last week. Um, those wells still looked amazing, and they still don't look horrible. I mean, I, I, they've made so much progress up there as far as the, the, the way that they're drilling the wells, the way they're completing the wells, and how much they're getting out of them. I, 
off the cuff, back of the napkin, in my viewpoint, is usually 50,000 feet, 5,000 feet is way too close. Um, but they've cut the cost of the wells down by 66%, and they've increased production by 25 to 35%. Um, and it's just phenomenal. The economics are phenomenal. So I'm sure if prices stay where they are, um, they will continue to find ways to improve those wells and make them economic because it's just that good of an asset. And that, that has been our wheelhouse for the better part of eight years. Um, and we continue and plan to continue to participate in, in non-operated wells there. So when you say DJ Bass and automatically, you know, the word Denver's in there, right? So I, I think yeah. I, I think of Colorado right right away, but but really the DJ is, is more of Wyoming, Nebraska, and Kansas, isn't it? It's a it's a lot in Kansas, um or and especially in, in uh, Wyoming and just a little bit in Colorado, but the part of it that's in Colorado, which is in Weld County, which is now its own has its own oil and gas um governance separate from the state. Um, is where most of our focus has been. And it's still, yeah, it's a little scary that it's in Colorado just based on things that have happened there in the last few years politically. Um, but it's all worked out and it's just kind of continued to move in the right direction. So, um, how long have a, you been, very, how long have you been, field. how long have you been drilling out there? You said eight years, 10 years, something like that? Eight years. So, yeah, we started leasing in 2012. I, I, um, I would stay in Fort Collins when I would go to Colorado. I would uh, stay because, you know, if I had a meeting in Denver or I had a meeting in Greeley, Fort Collins was much easier because it was right off the interstate because I would drive down from North Dakota. Right. And about five years ago, I did start noticing that in the breakfast bars, people would kind of look at me a little. I grew up as a Redskins fan, so when I'd wear a Redskins jersey, I, I understood what public shaming is when people look at you. <laughs> and. And so I kind of I kind of felt like that, you know, and and I'd ask people in the breakfast bars, you know, and just having regular conversation, you know, what do you do for a living? And then they'd look over their shoulder before they say oil and gas work and that sort of thing. Did you notice that evolution happening or talk to me about a little bit of that environment? If you're in Weld County, it I mean, you go to Fort Collins, it literally you can you can feel the energy change when you cross that county line. You absolutely can, and you can you can feel the energy change when you cross into Boulder County, and it's just it's amazing how 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 different it is across literally like a street. Um, it's it's a whole oh my goodness yeah I was I lived there too I lived in Denver for uh, 13 years so I I watched that evolve and um, we went from the black sheep to to the to the black mark. It was kind of interesting. It, was, it went from bad to worse. Um, hmm. People there are just it's it's a different. I don't understand. You know, everybody loves the benefits, but uh, it's a lot of misinformation. I think causes that. And and yeah, it was it was it was uh, it was not unusual at all to be at dinner and having a conversation about business and getting getting uh, snarls from across the room from people who were just just hated us because we were in the oil business. I mean, that just happened. It happened a lot. And, and like I said, I mean, I, growing up a Redskins fan, I mean, about 10, 15 years ago, I started feeling that. I mean, I, I remember going to the grocery store, and I mean, this elderly woman, she had to be in her 80s. She came up to me and said, how can you wear that? And it was a Redskins jersey. I got it as a gift. <laughs> I mean, this was like eight, eight, eight years ago, you know? I mean, so I was just kind of like, it was a Sunday morning for crying out loud anyways. But, oh, my, oh my goodness. Yeah, it was like a, it was like a Gus Ferrat Redskins jersey. The guy hadn't played there in like 10 years or something like that. It was a, anyway, but what, whatever. So, okay, Swan Energy, what is it that you guys do? You know, what? who are your customers? What services do you offer? Talk to me a little bit about, you know, what it is you guys are doing out there. Well, the main thing Swan Energy does is raise money to drill wells. And that's our primary focus, and we do a lot of that. Um, And then we manage about 60 different entities that we've formed over the years that do different things. And and some of the – everything I've mentioned is part of that group. Um, So uh, we have a pretty strong management team. And we are able to move quickly in, in whichever direction we decide to go. 
um, as a company. We uh, once started a we started our trucking company in less than twelve days um, from nothing. So what? What? You know, we, no? we we have we have <laughs> we did um, from from a concept to a business in twelve days. Um, but that's what we do. We create business. And, and we put together people that are like-minded to do that, and whether that's investors or engineers or a combination of that, uh, th- those two, or, or, or any combination, as far as that goes, um, we, we make shit happen. And that's, that's what we have done, and that's what we're going to continue to do even during this crazy time we're in right now. How is the trucking doing? I mean, obviously the Amazon deliveries are going to go up and the, the DoorDash deliveries and, you know, restaurants are going to probably have to have Uber Eats and, and things like that. But in the trucking world, a lot of people, I think, would assume that right now, anyways, the the, the trucking industry would be doing very well. It should be. I mean, it right, right. That it would be. Just, just, just restocking toilet paper, you think that you'd have enough business. Just, just that. Yeah, I, mean, I think that the piece of, the people that are going to be hurt the most are the retail businesses in this in this deal. I mean, when when you get into our industry and the end user, I mean, the products are going to still get delivered. Their people are going to still receive what they need. Mm-hmm. I, I don't see that stopping or changing. I think it's going to be they're going to receive it more um, indirectly than walking in and getting it themselves. But I I think we've already been headed that direction as a society. I mean, it's it's if you think about all of the things that we have today. Amazon is a big one where you know you get anything you want them tomorrow and most most things today um, at least here in Houston and without having to go anywhere I mean that that's already that's already been prepped for us so so like to live the way we're getting ready to live for a little while um, you know we, we've been we've been receiving hints of, of things moving in that direction for years and uh, I feel that with as much as I'm not a fan of uh, social media and all of the crazy it brings it's going to be the only outlet people have to communicate with other people for a little while so it's great it's, it's, it's a good thing that it's there um, here, here, here's what some kind of social normal like interaction wise what what you said earlier about things are never going to be the same again is you're right okay so we're already talking about you know this there, there's already a scuttlebutt and by the time this podcast goes out, we might already be in some sort of uh, two month, you know, shutdown because you know it doesn't take much to look at the tea leaves. Where when Las Vegas is shutting down for thirty days, the rest the rest of the dominoes are going to fall. Okay, it's just going to happen. And and in terms of uh, hotels, in terms of casinos, in terms of you know, just major public areas, you know, the retail sector, that sort of thing. But, hey, there's still going to be the same amount of money out on the planet, and it's still going to be circulating around. And so people are going to be ordering online and this and that. So, you know, the Macy's of the world and the J.C. Penney's of the world and um, th- that sort of thing, those those companies are going to suffer. They're, they're going to suffer. As I mentioned, the oil and gas companies, they're going to keep going. Because people still need to turn their light switches on. And that the reality is, at the end of the day, 95% of the products we use and the energy we, we use comes from fossil fuels. So I get that. However, humans, it takes about 21 days to do a new behavior. It takes about 21 days to recondition. So at the end of two months, if you know we're in some sort of two-month lockdown or some sort of two-month change of behavior, just the sheer timing of it we're going to come out different people and that's that 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 part's not lost on me that you know it it takes about three weeks to change a behavior like if you're going to quit smoking or you're going to quit drinking you're going to go work out or you're going to do they say after about three weeks it's it's pretty much a new part of your life so um not to get too you know existential on you brandon but you know i wanted to take even a step back further and say listen what you said earlier i think is exactly right that at the end of the summer Industry's not going to look the same. Probably the way that we look at America even won't even look the same either. The whole world is changing right before our eyes. And every 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 aspect of our lives are going to change some. Um, some will change a lot. And I'm actually kind of excited to see what happens. Um, I am too, to be honest. It's, it, it's scary. 
it's a little scary, like not knowing and kind of wondering where where we'll get what what will be in a week because the last week has brought change that I never thought I would see. So um, and it's exciting. It's a little a little unnerving, but at the end of the day, I think that we're resilient. So I want to. We, we will all we will all end up in in the right place and be okay. But but it's gonna it's gonna take a few. It's gonna take a little bit of a little bit of patience to get there. It's gonna be interesting to see how how this goes. But I do want to ask you one more question, if you had time, and that is about, sure. um, you know, the the big retirement shift that is going on in the industry, where they projected that by the year twenty twenty two. So we're only two years away from it that about 70% of the industry would be retired. So on, on one hand, you know, it's, there's even a term, the big cruise shift, you know, that's happening. And when you layer in, you know, the big data coming in and the new technologies coming in and the new jobs they are and remote fracking and this now coronavirus that's going to make remote working a lot more palatable for people. And I'll, all I could think of, not all I could think of, but I did take a moment to think of. I'm trying to be better with my language and my word play because what bothers me about the media is when they use absolute language and exaggerated language. So I'm trying to try. I'm trying to self-correct myself. Hey, man, I'm all about growth. You know, we're all about growth. But anyway, I get back to where I'm going. I'm thinking about the retirees, these 70 percent of retirees. You know, I'm sure part of their um their retirement was in the stock market, which is not doing well. But I'm sure a big portion of it was probably energy stocks, you know, oil and gas specifically. And and before the coronavirus hit, the uh, Russia and OPEC shenanigans already made energy stocks in the tank. Um, do you talk to any of the retirees? Do you know this issue that I'm talking? I just, you know, I just want to take a moment to say that if anybody you know, knows anybody that retired, you might want to reach out to them and just see how things are going because they might have just gotten hit with about an 80% reduction in the retirement in the last week and they don't know what the heck to do. So anyway, I just wanted to take a moment to mention that. I don't know if you've thought about that or if I'm out, out of line for even saying that in the interview, but... I I think you're spot on for saying that and I think there's probably a lot of people sitting around going, what am I going to do? Yeah, I, I know. I, I, I guarantee it. And, I, you know, I, I think that everyone, again, it gets back to, like, just let the dust settle before you do anything. Like, there's no, there's no reason to get in a rush because at this point, the whole world is almost stopped. So, the most important thing to do is not do anything rash and be calm like i i just i have the the crazier it's gotten the less concerned i've been and i don't know if that makes me crazy or if it's just to my character of like the 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 more out of control things are around you the more in control you have to be i don't know um no that makes sense that makes sense yeah I, i feel very 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 calm right now and uh it's kind of nice when you're just in control of yourself and, and, and your immediate right. family and your immediate surroundings. And, you know, uh, every summer for the last five years, I do a social media hiatus. I go off all my personal social media. And last month, last summer, I did it for four months. I just kept going. Wow. Yeah, it was great. Well, my son, he's now 13. He'll be 14 next month. He doesn't want any pictures on social media anymore. And so when he pretty much said, Dad, it's not cool, that pretty much ended it for me pretty easy because I don't post much about myself. I just, well, you know, a lot of people on Facebook and, and you know, that, that type of thing, they like the pictures of the kids and all that stuff. And and so I was okay with that. I do the business stuff. Don't get me wrong. I mean, there's, you know, LinkedIn and uh, Facebook. We've got over 250,000 followers just on Facebook between our six or seven social media sites there because the conversation can get pretty lively. But, um, you know, there, there is a there is an advantage. And to circle back to your comment about social media, that's the reason I bring it up. I do think right now social media is going to be a very utilized platform. With that said, I think that the real secret sauce is going to be how can you separate yourself and be noticed? Because think about it. If everybody's doing it, well, what's going to make you so special? Why are people going to look at you? And that that's going to be a tough, tough go because 
you know, people aren't going to be able to have meetings like they used to. They got to do things on Zoom and Skype and FaceTime and all. I mean, it's it's that just that whole trying to trying to arrange everybody's personal schedules. Oh boy, it's going to be interesting. Anyway, I I see I get going, man, sometimes and I just well, we, Anyway, go ahead. The thing is though, we we've already been heading there for a while. I mean, I I'm a I'm a face to face kind of meeting kind of guy. Like I prefer everybody in the same room, uh, whether that's me too, ten people or ten thousand people. But you know, it's 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 very very much everyone that wants to meet with me wants to do it on a video conference, and I hate doing that. And now I don't have a choice, so I guess I'm gonna have to suck it up and do it myself. I guess I'm gonna have to get on the program. But that's it's been there. It's been there for a while, and it's and it's gotten to the point where we can we can actually function as if we are in meetings from all over the world like we're in the same room it's it's amazing and and uh with that i was like what if this would have happened 20 years ago we would we would be in a different place today so everything that's happened in our lives and everything that's, that's there and it's available for us is is there for a reason i think that it, it's just uh, take advantage of it and everybody needs to, to relax until the dust settles enough to, to see through it one of the things I mentioned yesterday in the program is uh, this is a very good time to take a step back and ask yourself, what do you want to do with your business? What do you want to do with your life? How do you want to live your life? Because right now, in, in, the, in the midst of all this stuff going on, you actually have an opportunity, a legitimate opportunity to start fresh if you'd like to right now. And that can be in a lot of different ways. That can be in your personal life. That can be in your professional life. That can be even just reinventing your business. Because right now, just the way the market is, you're forced to be in a cocoon to a certain degree. Uh, what do they call it? Uh, social distancing? <laughs> whatever word, whatever wordsmithing Orwellian word they're using at us today, okay? It's, it's, it's kind of a, got a contradiction in nature to it. But I look at this. Right now, reinvent, reset, and revive your life. And so many people, their business is their life that it's a great opportunity to do all that together because you can. I mean, really, for me, four or five years ago, was it four four years ago? Up until four years ago, I had not done a phone interview on my programs because all of my interviews were face-to-face because I'm the same as you. I prefer face-to-face. And I was getting meetings with CEOs and you know everything like that, Harold Hamm and John Gibson and all the big names you can drop and this and that. Well, then, I, you know, then life changed for me, and I became a single father. And I was a full-time single father, alone by myself. And I had to reinvent my business at that time, so I created a home studio that allowed me to have phone interviews. And that changed my business, which set me up for today right now. So again, to validate your point about being calm, controlling your life, your surroundings, having a little faith even. And I think things will work out, don't you? Well, they have for me anyway. So I'm just saying they have for me. Things will absolutely work out. Even if, even if, I'm sitting here thinking, listening to you talk, going, okay, if I lose everything, then I could. That's 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 a, it's on the table. Like I I can say that. Like you said earlier about um, socializing energy, everything is on the table right now. It has to be. You just don't know. I'm still going to be okay if that happens. So yes, everything everything is going to end up where it needs to be, and the best is yet to come. I believe that wholeheartedly. The other. Moral of the story that we have is order local. Order your food local for a while because they the restaurants need help. <laughs> What's the name of that they, restaurant? They do. And, tip, oh. and tip people when you order local because those people still need to make money to live. What, what was the name of that restaurant that you mentioned earlier? Cowboys we be, and Indians. We better give them a plug. What's it? Cowboys yeah, and Indians. Yeah, you should. And they have a website, cni713.com. You can order free delivery. And their food is amazing. So I would absolutely suggest all of you try it. Cowboys and Indians. What city? It's in Houston. Okay. It's in Montrose. Uh, you know what? We're, we're going to put the link right on our website because here's the thing with the crude life is that sometimes, you know, living the crude life doesn't always go the best way. But we want to make sure we have a platform for people out there. So if anybody wants to come on and talk about what their business is doing or how they're responding or 
that sort of thing. You know, that's what the crude life is about. That's why we actually started the daily podcast. We started the daily podcast in January and we've been pre- prepping it for a year because, uh, you know, we do radio shows and our radio shows are podcasted. And that's how we looked at life was that we we're already doing things. So we podcast the interviews and then we podcast our radio shows. But we did know and we did see that the that the industry needed a daily talk show, if you will, a place for anyone to come on and talk about what's going on because the industry is changing every day. And so therefore we needed to be daily. So I just want to thank you for coming on and talking, you know, freely and openly and, and uh, just, you know, explaining to people out there that, listen, times are tough right now, but we're remaining calm. The host of the program's remaining calm. So if you remain calm, we'll all get through this together. And uh, so I just want to thank you for doing that. And go ahead and give your business another plug, if you wouldn't mind. So that way people can know if they want to reach out and do some business with you or even talk to you about how to remain calm. Swan Energy is my business and SwanEnergyInc.com is our website. And feel free to reach out. I I appreciate you having me on. It's actually been uh, very eye-opening for me just to have a conversation about this because I haven't really had many conversations about it. So um, my headspace is uh, way better than it was before we got on the phone, and I appreciate you and the questions you asked because it definitely took, it took the conversation in the direction it needed to go. So I appreciate it. 